In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and all things. A vibrant new world was born. Everything created by God was perfect and beautiful, displaying His wisdom, His goodness, and His almightiness. God created Adam and Eve in His own image, with His own hands, and breathed His very life into them. Jehovah God placed them in the Garden of Eden and told them, Of every tree of the garden you may freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For in the day that you eat thereof, you shall surely die. But Adam and Eve did not heed God's instruction. They gave in to Satan's temptation and ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. After that, mankind became more and more corrupt, evil, and decadent. They reached the highest levels of sin. They made an enemy of God and did not allow for His existence. This was why God resolved to wipe out mankind with a flood.
One day, Jehovah God came to Noah. 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 Oh, my Lord. The end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. Make you an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shall you make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without. After the flood, all living, breathing things on earth had died, except for eight people in Noah's family and every animal placed upon the ark. They have continued to proliferate on earth to this very day. God made a covenant with them that he would never destroy the earth with a flood again. And the rainbow seen today is proof of God's covenant with man. Jehovah said, Because the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grievous, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether. The cities of Sodom and Gomorrah were full of evil, licentiousness, rampant with murder, and indulgence in extravagant pleasures. They reached the point of clamoring against God, of fighting against Him, and raging His disposition. Where are the men which came into you this night? Bring them out to us, that we may know them. 
After the angels took Lot and his family out of the city, burning sulfur rained down from the sky. The raging fire lit up the heavens. Lives are on the line. Who cares about a house? Mom, hurry up! Mom, I'm afraid. Just one look. No. Just one look. No! No! Sodom, Gomorrah and all their residents were reduced to ashes, disappearing into the wrath of God. The Israelites, descendants of Abraham, fled to live in exile in Egypt due to famine. The Egyptians were terrified of the Israelites' expansion, so they enslaved them. The Israelites could not bear the torture and prayed to God. God heard their prayers and decided to lead the Israelites out of Egypt. He then called on Moses. Moses, now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come to me. And I have also seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come now, therefore, I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Moses went to see the Egyptian Pharaoh with God's command. But the Pharaoh would not agree to release the Israelites. The stubborn Pharaoh did not give in until God unleashed ten plagues. The Israelites finally departed from Egypt under God's guidance. of Jehovah! Lift you up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. Please, please, please. 
After escaping from the pursuing Egyptian soldiers, Moses continued to lead the Israelites southward until they came to Mount Sinai. In his almighty glory, Jehovah God descended to Mount Sinai and issued his commandments to the Israelites through Moses. God spoke all these words, saying, You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make to you any graven image. You shall not bow down yourself to them, nor serve them. You shall not take the name of Jehovah your God. After leading the Israelites out of Egypt, God issued laws comprised of commandments, teachings, prohibitions, and decrees. A total of 613 laws after collation by later generations. These laws from God were issued to explicitly instruct people on how to worship God and live on this earth. These laws were the earliest detailed conditions to guide mankind on how to live, to regulate human behavior, and measure moral standards. They were also the first basis and guideline toward determining sinfulness. If you stole from them, you should pay double. They provided standards and guidelines for future generations on the establishment of the Constitution. They also laid a foundation for the perfection of legal systems for subsequent generations. Many modern legal provisions and judicial concepts have been profoundly influenced by these laws. For example, murder, rape, Robbery, libel, and embezzlement were established as crimes based on the Ten Commandments. God's laws issued to the Israelites have not only had a profound impact on human law, but have also played a critical role in the establishment and formation of moral civilization and democratic institutions in human societies. In the end, after hundreds of years of living under the restrictions of the law, the Israelites were unable to uphold the law. They constantly violated the teachings of the law, and everyone faced the danger of being condemned or put to death through the law. They were also repeatedly preyed upon by other peoples and were subjected to the torment of war and oppression. So they urgently prayed and called out to God, and they received a promise. 
a promise that the Israelites could gain an eternal sin offering and they would no longer be condemned or put to death according to the law. A promise that would revolutionize the Israelites' very existence and fate. Thus, Jehovah God told the Israelites by means of a prophet. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be on his shoulder and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. In the year of our Lord, a male child was born in a manger in a Jewish inn in Bethlehem. Three wise men from the east, guided by a star that had never before been seen, came to the place of the child's birth. They bowed down to him in worship. This child was the one promised by God, who would lead and redeem the Israelites from God's law. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. But let your communication be, yes, yes, no, no. For whatever is more than these comes of evil. Not everyone that said to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that does the will of my Father which is in heaven. the Lord Jesus Christ put an end to the Israelites' lives of slavery to sin. They no longer had to face the peril of being condemned or executed for their inability to uphold God's law. I send the promise of my Father on you. Thomas, reach here your finger, and behold my hands, and reach here your hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing.
Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Their sins were pardoned because of the Lord Jesus' sin offering. Their living conditions underwent a complete change. From then on, the Israelites no longer lived under the law. Instead, they lived under the protection of the sin offering brought to them by the Lord Jesus. It meant that the Israelites had completely cast off the binds of the law and entered an entirely new age. In this age, they were atoned of their sins through repentance and the Lord's abundant grace. And they also enjoyed the promise bestowed upon them by the Lord Jesus. It was an age replete with the Lord's mercy, love, tolerance, blessings, forgiveness, and patience. This is why we called this new age the Age of Grace. People's sins could be forgiven as long as they accepted the Lord Jesus as their Savior and they could enjoy the rich grace and blessings bestowed upon them by God. This grace not only narrowed the gap between God and man, but also rescued humanity from their slavery to sin. This allowed people to no longer stray from God because of their sins to be absolved because of God's sin offering and because of God's rich grace, be able to come in front of him at any time, any place. The coming of the Lord Jesus brought an end to the old age of constraints by the law and ushered mankind into a new age. Meanwhile, it improved the relationship between God and man and opened up a new beginning, a new start to God's work of management among mankind. In 70 AD, 37 years after the Lord Jesus was resurrected and ascended into heaven, the Roman army captured Jerusalem. The diasporas of Jewish people wandered the earth after being driven out of the land of Israel. Although they had lost their homeland, they carried with them the Lord Jesus' gospel of the heavenly kingdom, which had been confined to Judea, and spread it to every corner of the world. May the Lord have mercy on me. My legs have been healed 
I can stand up! Thanks, Tubal. Oh Lord, may you have mercy on your child. Our Father, the short in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Here we must proclaim that God's wisdom surpasses the heavens, and His deeds are wondrous beyond belief. And He has not his temptation, but deliver us from evil.